Hello everyone, I am Legend here, bringing you guys a build guide for the runic spam build in God of War Ragnarok. This build is a lot of fun to play and for those who want to spam those runic attacks and see how flashy they look, this build is for you. There is only one downside for this build when you play on higher difficulties which is survival. The footage I am going to show you is on no mercy difficulty. So please do not rush while playing this build and be a bit careful. When you play on normal or lower difficulty you don't have to worry about it much. But I am going to be explaining how the build works and see how to survive too when using this build. So without further ado, let's get to the build. Starting off with weapons, for the Leviathan Axe, I am using Runic Hailstone Knob. So the purpose of this build is to max out the Runic and Luck stats as much as we can. Having cooldown stat as low doesn't matter as we will be triggering a lot of cooldowns to the Luck stat. So as mentioned, we are using Runic Hailstone Knob for the stats. And also you will be getting a blessing of Runic when you hit a frosted enemy but that doesn't matter much. The other choice of attachment you can have is Grip of Weighted Recovery which as the perk says stun grabbing an enemy gives you blessing of cooldown. So you can combine this with Hell's Touch which is a light Runic attack for the axe which gives you more stun potential. And for the blades I am using Luminous Recovery Handles for both stats and the perk. Cause it's so good to get your cooldowns back for most of your runic attacks. Mashing your triangle button triggers the whiplash refresh perk and gives you cooldown of runic attacks. Like mash the triangle button and end it with R1 or R2 when your blades are equipped as you can see. For the spear I'm using hint of weightless recovery for the luck stat and also to get the blessing of cooldown. So like I explained before, we will depend on our luck to get the cooldowns and having higher luck stat helps. Now coming to the runic attacks, use the ones which give you more AOE or more damage. It completely depends on your choice and playstyle. And for heavy runic attack, I am running Breath of Tamur, which is obtained from the Raven chest of course. And again, for the blades, I am using the light runic attack as Rampage of Furies and for the heavy runic attack, I swap between Tame the Beast and Meteoric Slam. Meteoric Slam is very good for AoE so you can swap accordingly as per your playstyle. And coming to the spear, we have Thrust of the Thousand Soldiers and the Finger of the Ruin. Finger of Ruin is again obtained from the Raven Chess. If you collect certain amount of Ravens you can get that. And for the Thrust of Thousand Soldiers I mainly use this because you can spam your R1 and have more thrust. And after that you can hold your triangle to detonate it which gives you more damage. For the shield I am running an onslaught shield again only for the stats and the shield attachment as round of disruption only for the stats itself. You can run a star shatter shield too if you wish doesn't really matter which one you are using unless until you are meeting the stats like if you need more runic go for the star shatter if not go for the onslaught. And for the spartan rage you have a choice between wrath and valor. If you are a guy who rushes more with this build and if you are playing on a very high difficulties like no mercy or give me god of war. There is a chance of you dying if you are not careful. So if you have Valor as your Spartan Rage, you can use L3 and R3 to get some portion of your health back. If not, if you are being a bit careful and spamming runic attacks, like I said in the intro, you can use Wrath. I personally prefer Wrath as my playstyle to kill things much more faster. Coming to the Relic, this is the most important part of the build. When used it applies a mark to the enemies and killing them reduces the cooldowns of your runic attacks and gives you the blessing of runic. Which will help you to spam more of your runic attacks and also if you keep using your relic kill those enemies with your runic attacks or even with your melee attacks you can get the portion of your cooldowns back and also the runic damage increases too. Now coming to the armor starting off with our chest armor we will be running Giptomader's chest. I don't know how to even pronounce this name. And I'm sorry if I butchered it. We are using this chest for the runic and luck stats. And I'll be using the stat word a lot in this video. So again apologies. We are using this chest for the stats. And also the main perk which is so good for this build. Like it gives you a moderate luck chance when using a runic attack. Which restores 70% of the cooldown. It says moderate luck. But since your luck stat is like really high. It triggers very often as you will see later in the video. When I'm doing the gameplay. And for the rest and waste armor, we are running Berserker's armor as it has awesome perks. Rest armor has a chance to trigger a soul explosion which gives you good AOE and also restores the cooldown of your relic. And the more cooldown we get on our relic, we can use it more often 
which will trigger the cooldowns of our runics too. So the build works together like this. So again, the waste armor is amazing too because of the work on it. Like you, like if you have a rush play style, like you can combine it with value. Like I said before, go take damage, use your Spartan rage, then get the cooldown of the relic. Again, use the relic and kill the enemies with your runic attacks. Now for the amulet, we can go with the ones which either gives you runic or luck stats. I'm using Vanaheim ones, which gives you more stats towards the luck. And also it has increased melee damage against status afflicted enemies. Like use your companions more often. Lot of people don't mention it, but your companions are very useful during the fights. Like use their purple or sonic arrows, like the purple sigil arrows and use the status afflicted on them, which gives you increased melee damage and also it will help you kill things much more faster. And for the other sockets, we are using the Aetherian Runic Gem, which increases all your runic attack damage when the permafrost emulation and maelstrom abilities are fully charged. These are the attacks which charge when you use those weapons more often. Like if you use axe, you get permafrost buildup. Similarly with blades and spear. You will know when your weapon is fully charged when you have a well one plus triangle prompt on your weapon near your health bar. That is how you know when it is fully charged. So once it's fully charged, your runic attacks will deal more damage. And for the other part, which is mainly the survivability, like I mentioned for this build, you will need stone idol of souls. Like the stone idol of souls is a must for every build when you're playing on very higher difficulties. Like when you use a rage stone or a hell stone, it will give you a soul steal. Like if you use the rage stone and use the breath of the armor or the meteoric storm or the finger of ruin, which gives you more AOE, you can get pretty much all your health back. And for the air's armament, since we have more luck stat, again, I'm mentioning stat, which will give you more survivability as it will trigger a health burst when used it when you get a runic attack kill so that is how it works so you can survive while killing with runic attacks and also using your health stones so that is the survivability of this build and for the next part of the amulet i'm using muspelheims again for just for the stats sake you can use pretty much anything if you want over there but make sure like you have attain runic gem stone idol of souls and also the year's armament with you to survive with this build so the playstyle for this build will be like do not rush much spam your runic attacks use your relic kill the enemies get the cooldowns back then spam them again and repeat last of all have shit ton of fun using this build there are a lot of other builds for survival and fast clearing which are already done by awesome content creators but this build is for the people who wants to use runic attacks more often in the gameplay you're gonna see that I always have the runic attacks at my disposal and I rarely run out of them. I will leave you guys with the gameplay of this build and if you like the build, if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos, helps me a lot and also please let me know in the comment section which build should I make next and also the inputs are always appreciated to make this build even more fun to play. Alright, I'll leave you guys with the gameplay now, peace.
Brother, you're covered in bifrost. Oh! 